So what have I got for you today? Well, it's Mitsubishi L200. It's the Titan edition. It does have the side steps, but it's lacking the cover and the uh, bars on the back, which is a shame. I think we'd look a lot better with them. But you know, you can kind of have everything. This rather interesting looking pickup is running a six speed manual on the 2.4 litre turbo diesel, which generates 178 horsepower, according to the old facts and figures there. And it's not a bad looking machine. I'm not a huge fan of the front grille, but I guess that's down to taste. This one looks like it's been cared for reasonably well. There's no dents in the back and the uh, bar at the back where the tow bar is connected to is absolutely pristine. My first impressions are in here that it's a bit more car-like than the Amarok I took out recently. In some ways, but not all. The seating certainly seems a bit more car-like. The floor's higher. So it gives you the feeling that you're actually climbing into a car instead of a, a pickup, which I suppose is interesting. But that's always been an L200 thing. Even from back in the old days when I used to look at the um, early 2000s L200. But that thing was a lot more simplistic beast than this is today. There's a lot more going on now. We've got a lot of creature comforts like DAB radio and keyless entry, keyless start. The spec has come a long way in the L200. So you one thing that hasn't changed, the engine noise. It's still as agricultural as ever. It felt at home in the L200 very quickly. I wonder if that's just because I'm used to driving commercials these days. It probably is. But anyhow, uh, I was surprised at how much it's come along. The last L200 I'd driven was a 2001 model. And so much has changed inside since then. The gearbox feels much and such the way it always did. The steering is certainly better and more responsive. There's certainly a lot more toys to play with. I mean, the old one was lucky it got a CD player. In fact, I seem to remember it was a tape deck, a standard, and that one had, had an upgrade. Yeah, that, that's how bad they were. It's still a little bouncy on the road, but it's a pickup. I wouldn't expect miracles. It's still better ride quality than I got in the Amarok, which surprised me greatly. Oh, hey, she's got a bit of torque, this thing. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Obviously from that you can tell it's got a bit of acceleration when the turbo kicks in. But yeah, so other things that it shares with the Amarok is the large windows. So you can see all around very, very easily. Visibility is great. And on a pickup, something that large, you do want to be able to see what's going on around you. Let's start taking a look at some of this interior. Now these door cards are nice in their finish. I like the three color schemes going on. The large expanded door bin is great. You can see there that the chrome door handles and the switches are premium-ish. The nice piano black finish going on actually makes four colors. Anyway, um, the one downside that I see with these door cards is that cloth section. You can see what's going to happen here. You've got overalls on and you've got dirty. You rub your hand against that. That's going to get dirty very quick. You're never going to get that out again. And speaking of trying to get the stains out, there's carpet on this floor and the seats are cloth. I don't have high hopes for vehicles of this spec staying clean for very long at all. But you know, at least the seat's comfortable. And yeah, okay, there's no electrics, but the manual adjustments are good with plenty of scope. This one does have the keyless entry, keyless start option. Yeah, I can understand why it'd be useful. It just could have been done a little bit better, I think. Anyways, the vents are nice. And you'll notice the fuel filler is down the bottom here. And the bonnet release just underneath it. The pedals are well spaced too. I would imagine the target market in the UK is tradesmen and farmers for these. So if they do have buttons on the steering wheel, they better be simple. I think they may be slightly too complicated. But I guess it works. The simplicity is certainly at work in the instrument cluster. Everything's nice and simple and well laid out. The only objection I suppose I have is the fuel bars. I, I would rather have a gauge, but that's a personal preference thing. I think most people won't mind too much. The dash is kind of flat and plain. I expected a document holder of some kind and there really wasn't one. The stereo itself is reasonable. It does have DAB, Bluetooth and all those other fancy things but it seems a little sluggish and it does have a bit of a problem with lag when you press buttons. The climate control system is nice and straightforward, very easy to work. And if you see further down there, you'll notice the hazard light button, which is 
reasonably well placed and the seatbelt warning light system is right here I don't know a bit fancy for a pickup now under that you have the 12 volt socket and the USB ports and then what's this plastic thing under here well it doesn't look very oh okay there's nothing under it now interestingly enough there is one other thing in here if you look down there you might be able to see there's a little slot there this is for your keyless entry key if I can get it in there and apparently it's just supposed to sit in there like that gear stick here is large and agricultural with everything else being quite simple I would have expected a lever for your drive option select but no it's an electronic turn dial there's two cup holders standard handbrake and a little cubby hole area back here which is weird that it's got two sections but okay these back doors are slightly larger than they are in their Amarok and here's why getting in and out is actually a breeze in this particular pickup more leg room than even the Amarok had and I was quite surprised at that the door entranceway is larger too and then when you come in the back the roof does slope down a little bit but not a huge amount the seats themselves well yeah they're basic cloth but they're fine and they are comfortable and you'll notice here we do actually get an armrest unlike in the Amarok if I can get it to come out and it does have two cup holders in it nice finish well done Mitsubishi also saw fit to put isofix points in the back too well done on them now I'm no expert on pickup beds but it seems pretty good overall it's reassuringly heavy when it comes down it does have supports on either side and the bed size looks to be pretty good I haven't actually measured it but it does look good I would say the L200 has evolved nicely since the early models in the early 2000s I remember driving the L200 back then and I think they were about 114 horsepower very basic inside in fact I can't even think if I had electric windows or not it was very bare basic but this one's got a lot of the bells and whistles that people normally expect these days and for a reasonable price too I don't think you can go too far wrong with an L200 in modern times I can't help feeling I was a bit lazy on this review hopefully my next one is a bit better maybe I just wasn't feeling it that day but anyway if you liked it regardless hopefully you like and subscribe and uh, check out some of the other wonderful stuff we've got coming up soon I try and release a video every week. Sometimes if it's one like this, I'll release two in a week. Anyway, till next time, look after yourselves.